Now, if you've watched a vlog from way back in the day, you know, I've had a lot of jobs. I think I've added maybe 60 jobs in my life. For example, if I worked in a restaurant, but I was a server, I was a host, I was a dock master, I was a, you know, expediter, that's, that's four different positions. My first job was a paper boy. As a matter of fact, the street right out here, uh, I used to walk up and down and deliver newspapers. Uh, my second job ever was here. Still is the place I remember in my in my mind. Ten or twelve or something. It was, and I was a I was a, a busboy. My memory from this place is that the, the the back room was way back there, and I uh, I remember once I was carrying a tray of dishes and whatnot, and I tripped and I fell and I splashed milk all over this lady. I'm so embarrassed. Anyways, I, uh, Dad's still sleeping. I'm trying to put together uh, a vlog from a couple of days ago. I'm trying to put in time for, for vlog, but also capture a lot of my dad. I, so far, I'm quite happy with how it's coming up, coming about. Hi. Taking videos? I'm a, I'm a YouTuber. Nice to meet you. I used to work here. Here? This was my second job. Really? When it was Grecian Table. Man, it's okay, like a long this. time ago. <laughs> Watch the earth spin beneath your feet and maybe I love Chinese food, I love China, but I'll tell you what, a good diner is worth its weight. And these sort of like really relaxed, fairly inexpensive breakfast joints where you can get a breakfast or a gyro or gyro, whatever you want to say. It's just a relaxed place to sit and, and enjoy enjoy some grub. They have like I guess the Chinese equivalent would be like a, a bouncer place where you can get dumplings, something like that. Or a hun tun, and you get a hun tun. But the variety of dishes aren't necessarily there. The opposite to that would be fine dining. There's a lot of fine dining in China, but there's not this like middle ground, this diner where you can kind of get a variety of stuff. It tastes really good, off a griddle, a little greasy, but tasty. I knew this woman. Good morning, sir. How are you? The D. Hi, Matt. How you doing, bud? All right. How you doing? Did you sleep all right last night? Uh, eventually. Took a little while. We were just talking about stuff, talking about stories, and uh, this one time, I was young. Mm -hmm. We went to Cozumel, Mexico. We went there scuba diving. Mm -hmm. That was the purpose. Great scuba diving. The best scuba diving I think I've ever had. Was yeah, the well, they had a lot of float dives. In all the caves, you'd have eel and the huge crabs. Huge crabs. Huge crabs. It was it was really neat. Very relaxing. Very comfortable. Yeah. Do you remember the chile quiles? The, the breakfast that was outside, we walked outside oh, of the yeah. hotel into this like tent yeah. and they had, it was just eggs and tortillas and yeah. and beans, oh boy that was good. I remember the chilequiles. Yeah, yeah. Or were they huevos rancheros, I don't know. You know they something, were Matt would always remember those kind of things. Me, just give me the eggs, or, you know. <laughs> Matt and I, we, we said, well, you know, we'd had this day of diving and we decided we're going to go on out to uh, get something to eat. So we stopped at this really nice club and there was this uh, Mexican guy there and he had a Mexican hat and he had a guitar and he's serenading the tables. And uh, he comes upon us and, and Matt, he'd, he'd practiced guitar a little bit and uh, he was getting to where he was comfortable on it. And, you know Matt, you know, he, he's not shy about talking about himself. And so he, he says, hey, can I play your guitar? And I sunk down in my chair. I'm thinking, this poor Mexican guy, he's out here trying to make a living. And this here, gringo. This gringo comes on and he's going to take his guitar and put his hat out to the, you know, whatever. You know, it's, it's an impression. Uh, it's, it's, it's how you take certain circumstances and I've always thought of that that experience mm -hmm. uh, many times I've thought about that I think about the chile que lace yeah. <laughs> the sombrero yeah. guitar and the scuba diving but uh, my dad thought of it as why are you impeding on this guy's space he's doing his thing and let him do his thing and I remember it was a very awkward right. moment right. Mm -hmm. the moment I took that guitar and I looked at my dad 
my dad was just like, oh God, why are you, why are you doing this? Me and my dad are the same in many ways, mm -hmm. but we're different in many ways too. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things that we we were all, mm -hmm. we've been different about. You know? Absolutely. And for me, I was, I was excited that I could play the guitar. I saw this guy playing the guitar in another country. Mm -hmm. I think that was the first time I was out of the United States. Oh, what? And so I'm like, this is something that I can relate to with this guy, and I can also kind of practice my guitar. Now, in my brain, I was a lot better at the guitar than I actually was. And I remember getting the guitar, and I'm, I'm strumming some some tune on it, but it was, it was overly simplistic, and and in a lot of ways, I, I wasted this guy's time, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was trying to share a little bit of myself with the world through this guy's guitar, and maybe, like, I was thinking of it as if I was playing the guitar and some kid came up and said, hey, I can play the guitar too. Can I try? Then and I, and it would I can, a sharing thing. And I can see that. Yeah. You know, I can definitely see that. I just felt like just this wasn't the place. Yeah. You know, and um, foot was on the other shoe, so to speak. Yeah. What, what Matt would do, if, you know, if it was his son in the circumstance. Well, and, and that's what we're talking about. You know, we've been sitting here and, and hashing some stories. Actually, it would have been nice to leave the camera on. There was some, some sort of tearful moments where, where we're talking back and forth. But, you know, my dad is different from me in some ways. Mm -hmm. And he's the same as me in a lot of ways. Many ways. We both have an extreme form of empathy. Mm -hmm. Like we feel for others almost more than we feel for ourselves. In a lot of ways, this is an, your, your, your upcoming death and this whole situation you're looking at it from a standpoint of I'm sad I'm I'm putting other people through pain rather than the pain you're feeling yourself absolutely and that is a very gallant thing this guitar situation highlights some of the differences mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so in in my way which is funny because it, they were both empathetic in some ways mm -hmm. because I was thinking I'm gonna empathize with others and I'm gonna share myself with 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 this guitar, mm -hmm. and you were saying I'm I, I'm empathizing with this guy, and I don't think you should take his guitar mm -hmm. because he's he's doing his thing, you know, and right. it's important to him. We were both empathizing, but in different ways. We also talked about how this is is a this is a very narcissistic thing to put a mm -hmm. camera in your face and talk about yourself, talk right. about your feelings, talk about like what are you better than I, what are you better than me, you know? Yeah. Um, I've always thought of it as a sharing, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm sharing my world with you, whereas, you know, somebody might be able to get some benefit out of how my dad's going through this rough time or, mm -hmm. or what I'm doing in China. But it is, when you boil it down, it is a very proud thing. Mm -hmm. It's a very narcissistic thing, can be, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of ego involved, you know. I'm confident enough, and I've been very confident mm -hmm. enough to portray myself on video and put myself out to the world. A lot of people can't do that, you right. know. You know, maybe taking that guitar back then was an a was a brief example of how the Jayo Nation might develop down down the road, you know, we never knew it, you know. Right. So if if this goes on out there, nation, I'm curious. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? Check the comment section below. <laughs> so what are we doing today? We're um, just gonna hang out. We're gonna hang out. Yeah. Maybe we'll shoot a couple games of pool and talk. Yeah, they like that pool talk. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have been uh, commenting positively about the videos. I think everybody is walking, everybody is walking through this together with you. Amen. You know. You know. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming along on the journey. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm fortunate to know that it's really a, a matter of months rather than a matter of years. Yeah. It gives me a chance to finish stronger than if. Uh, if there was these unknown questions. I'm, I'm fortunate and I can share truths with people and I can share them with people and people will be more willing to listen because there's nothing in it for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just sharing. At a moment in time, I want all of you guys to think, how would you act if you were in a similar circumstance? And if you're not acting that way right now, why? One thing that me and dad loved to do, or dad loved to do, and therefore I would, was play darts. There used to not be this big wooden, do you know why this wooden thing is there? Because we missed. <laughs> no, because I slammed Anthony's head through the wall. Did you really? Yeah, the big dent here. Really? Yeah, there's an indentation in the uh, drywall. Because I had Anthony in a headlock, and I went boom! 
and I rammed his head through the wall. I did not know that. Sorry, Anthony. The truth of the matter is that Anthony kicked my ass. Did he? He's a little guy. He's, he's like a spider monkey. Yeah, yeah. I had to depend on my lanky arms to wrap, get him in headlocks. All right, guys. I think every time we come down here, we'll do a, a billiard lesson in life. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And today's lesson in life is about perspective. And it really, and maybe this whole day could be about perspective. So from my point of view, this is the, the, the projectile ball and that is the recipient. And all I could see from my perspective that is if I hit this ball, I would end up with a problem of how to get out of this mess. Right. But a mess is only a mess in the eye of the beholder. Because when I look at that, I just see a mess of balls. But when my dad looked at it, he says, well, look at this. These two balls, if you knock them properly, corner. not only get the 15 in the corner pocket, but with enough placement, you can break up this whole constellation the 10, the, of balls. Nine ball, get all those balls out of there and uh, open up the table for himself. Yeah. So what I thought of as a situation that was a negative was actually... A positive. It just depended on how you looked at it. But it was only a positive if you knew it was there. You had to take a step back, look at the whole picture. You know, if you look at situations from a, from a narrow perspective, think about like racism, politics, uh, anything. You're, you're, if your perspective is narrowed, you're, you're not able to make all of the conclusions that you might be able to make. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the whole table, the whole set of balls, then you could say, I know the best path to take because I've looked at all of the potential landing sites. <laughs> now, for this analogy to work, I actually have to make some balls. <laughs> so let's see. This is perfect. A dead ball shot. Yeah. Okay, that's not too bad. 